All right, men, welcome to today's episode, How to Flirt with Your Wife. This is going to be a good one. <laughs> so uh, wanted to read a featured review. Uh, this is by Needed a Reboot. He says, some good brand new perspective. I found Dr. Mike's resources while in a bad place in my marriage. My marriage had crashed onto the rocks after I'd been steering it there for many years. I was looking at the possible end of everything I'd tried to build for 15 years. Realizing that all I knew about marriage and being a husband clearly wasn't enough, I went on a journey of discovery to figure what was what I was missing and where I had gone so wrong. Dr. Mike's podcasts have been a tremendous help, especially with helping me understand how to deal with my emotional issues without having to depend on the state of my marriage or my wife's feelings for me for my own happiness. While I have a long way to go, Dr. Mike has helped me discover a new direction, and I have hope that the best version of myself is being forged. This is awesome. I love reading these reviews. Guys, if you're listening to this, take a minute right now, pause the podcast, and write a review where you are, <laughs> okay? If you're driving, maybe wait till you, wait till you finish driving, or just pull over and, and pause it right now and write a review. This is how the, the podcast gets picked up, gets shared. You know, there's thousands of people listening, so, you know, take a minute and pause, write the review, share it, okay? This is how it gets out there. All right, so... What is flirting? When we talk about it, you know, you've heard of that word, but what is it exactly? So this is from Wikipedia. Flirting or coquetry. <laughs> so like coquette, you, like in the old days you call a flirt a coquette, um, is a social and sexual behavior involving spoken or written communication, as well as body language by one person to another, either to suggest interest in a deeper relationship with the person or if done playfully for amusement. So this is why sometimes you'll go and you'll look things up about flirting or you'll read a book about dating and flirting, and it won't really apply to a marriage very well. Um, you know, one of the big ones you'll read about is stuff like um, like teasing her, um, basically kind of like busting on her, ragging on her, you know, uh, making fun of little insecurities she has. Like those things work when you're dating kind of, I mean, they, they work because they build up some sense of like insecurity and like not sure of where things are going. And, you know, that's kind of exciting for, for some women. Um, but it doesn't really work very well in a marriage because you are committed to each other and, you know, you, making fun of each other, like, like saying, Oh, you know, there's a, you know, that zit on your head and everybody can see it. Like you'll, you'll read stuff like that in, some dating advice, but it, don't do that. Okay. Don't go around like trying to make your wife more insecure. It will not lead to the type of real intimate connection that you want. Okay. So women though, they're looking for security and romance. Okay. So security is pretty clear. You know, that's knowing that you're going to be there, knowing that you're trustworthy, knowing that you're going to be a good father. Okay. All those things are, are really solid. A lot of the guys that are religious that I work with, they're pretty good at this. You know, they have that base to them that, um, you know, they're going to be solid in those ways. But women also want romance, which is excitement and mystery, the feeling of excitement and mystery related to love. And this is where sometimes, you know, and even if we started off with this and we were pretty good at it, sometimes we lose it over time. So flirting, it's a way to introduce excitement, fun, and mystery to your marriage. That's probably the, you know, a, a good way to think about it. So one of the easiest ways and fastest ways to do this is just to start complimenting and appreciating your wife more than you are now. Okay. And these are genuine compliments and genuine appreciation for the type of woman that she really is. Now, a lot of guys will jump straight to, oh, well, let me just tell her how pretty she is or how hot she is or how sexy she is. Okay. It can be about her appearance, but usually it's more meaningful to give her confidence and appreciation about her character. Okay. We'll get into things about that. If you are going to compliment her appearance, you know, you want to be specific. You want to talk about how beautiful she is typically more than how sexy she is or how hot she is. You know, you can do that. There's times for that. And there's, um, you know, ways to do that playfully, but especially if your marriage isn't in a good spot right now, you pretty much want to avoid, comments about her appearance, right? And you want to go more for these character trait ones. But even if, you know, it's more meaningful for you to say something like, wow, you know, your hair looks really amazing today. You know, look how 
you know, it looks shiny, it looks soft. I just want to touch it. So that's going to be a lot more flirtatious and attractive than saying, oh, wow, you look hot today. You know, I want to go have sex right now. You know, that's not going to be as effective. Okay. So some ideas as, as far as her character, you know, what do you appreciate about her as a mother? Like a lot of women, unfortunately, struggle with this, this thought or feeling that they're not good enough as a mom. So if you can just, you know, remind her how much you appreciate what she does for your kids, you know, that's huge. It makes a big dif difference to her. Compliment her to the kids, you know, tell the kids in front of her, hey, you know, your mom's great. Look at the things she, that she does for you. Or even when she's not around, right? Tell your kids how great he, uh, she is as a mother. Okay, as a wife, what does she do that you really appreciate that, you know, you really admire and that you love that she does for you. But outside of that, just as a woman, you know, as who she is in the world, you know, in her career, what she does for work, how she interacts with friends. Um, you know, for me, I really admire my wife's, what she's doing for her work, you know, going out there, being uh, an advocate for, um, uh, for sex trafficking victims and bringing awareness to that. And that is hard. That is strong. You know, she's a strong person to do that. And, you know, I don't, I, I want to do better at reminding her how much I admire that about her. You know, what character traits does she have that you admire? Hey, you know, is she loving? Is she kind? Is she a great friend? Is she patient? Um, you know, is she a hard worker? Whatever those things are, you know, and again, you want to be specific. Hey, I really noticed how you did that today. It reminds me what a hard work you are. Is she a great cook? You know, wow, thank you so much for making that meal. Not only do you have that skill, but you cared enough to make the meal for me. Thank you, right? Again, using specific examples is better than just saying, oh, you're nice. <laughs> okay, that's more like what a kindergartner writes to, you know, someone he has a crush on. Oh, you're nice. You're, you're fun, right? No, you want to be more specific. The other thing you want to be very careful of is watching out for going into mosquito mode right? Where you're, you're writing these, but you're expecting her then to fire back with a compliment of her own, okay? This is just you really admiring her and telling her, hey, wow, you know, look at who you are as a person. I really admire that. And that's it, okay? So as a bonus, you know, you can compliment her in public. So when you guys are out on a date, my wife and I had a date recently where we started doing this and it was just really fun. Uh, you know, the, the guy would say something, uh, we were getting a a vacuum <laughs> actually is what we were doing. Um, and we were just kind of, you know, she would say something like, Oh, look how handsome he is. And I'd be like, Oh, you know, that would make me feel good. And then I'd just say something like, you know, he was asking about the kids. And I'd be like, Oh yeah, she's the best mother. And, you know, she does such a good job with the kids. And, you know, the guy could see that we really admired each other and, you know, he was laughing and we were laughing and he was like, Oh yeah, you guys are so good together. You know, because we were complimenting each other in that way, in front of somebody else. Okay. All right. So eye contact, another good way to flirt. So eye contact, it triggers the limbic mirror system. So mirror neurons, they sort of like mimic back what the other person is doing. Um, you know, it's a way that we share and understand emotions with each other. So through the eyes, right, you can see windows to the soul, as some people call it. So take the time, look into your wife's eyes more often, hold her gaze for a little while. But understand also that the, you're going to communicate through your eyes whatever you're actually thinking and feeling about her. So, you know, take the time to look back and think about all those things you admire and how much you care about her and how much you love her, because that's going to come across in that eye contact. If you come across and you're angry at her, or you're frustrated and you're upset, or, you know, you're like, oh, I just want you back so bad and I'll do anything for you. Like that's all coming through your eyes as well. So get yourself in a strong spot, a place where you care about her and admire her and show that, you know, through your eye contact, you know, thinking, why are you fortunate to be married to her? Okay. So you're communicating that love and that attraction through your eye contact. That's what you want to be showing her. Hey, I care about you. I'm attracted to you. You know, I find you amazing. All right. So another way to, to flirt is through physical touch. So guys often they'll want to go straight to like sexual hot spots on a woman's body when they're trying to flirt. So they'll come up to their wife in the kitchen, just like grab her butt or touch her chest or, you know, go for a crotch. All of that 
<laughs> typically doesn't work very well. And uh, if you if you're like, well, I've tried physical touch, probably you're, you're doing something like this, right? You're just kind of walking up and groping her. And 99.9999% of women do not like that. Uh, like 100% of men try that, it seems like, but almost no woman enjoys it or likes it. So groping, not great physical touch, okay? Instead, you know, hold hands with her, you know, touch her hands, kiss her hand, you know. Hands have a lot of nerve endings. And so, you know, when you're touching those, it's it's communicating, you know, it's showing uh, attraction, affection. Okay, so holding hands, kissing her, okay, your mouth. So just on like your the way that your body is set up in your brain, it's called the homunculus, but part of the your body is represented in certain parts of your brain. The hands are really overrepresented. The mouth also overrepresented. So kissing her, it, you know, the lips have tons of nerve endings. So you when you kiss her, that activates a lot of, you know. It activates our brain. It's stimulating, right? So, you know, give her give her more kisses. You know, hold her face in your hands when you do that. Uh, kiss her in front of the kids or in public if she's if she's up to that, right? It's just showing like, hey, I, I, I love you. I'm attracted to you. And it, not necessarily going straight to making out. Again, you know, that's, that's another thing, right? So a, a, a nice, passionate, strong kiss, you know, without your tongue especially right away, right? You just go and give her a nice, uh, a nice kiss. Okay. Another way you can, uh, flirt, right? Whisper something into her ear. Again, that's, uh, you know, stimulating, uh, you know, surprise her with a hug from behind. Just tell her, Hey, you look great today. Or, um, Hey, thanks for making dinner or, you know, whatever's going on. Hey, you know, great job on your interview today, whatever it was. Right. So grab her a hug from behind, whisper something into her ear that you admire about her. Great way to flirt. Touching the small of her back while walking her through a door or just while you're out together or, you know, grabbing her waist or having a hand around her waist while you're walking around with her or, you know, when you're giving her a kiss, grabbing her around the, around the waist, okay? Again, notice you're not grabbing her butt or going for her chest when you're going for the kiss, right? I can come later. Let her sort of take the, the lead on that. Um, flirting, it's more about sensual than sexual, right? You don't go straight for those hot spots. You, you go to other spots that are still stimulating. Okay. The other thing is like, what are you communicating through this? You're communicating attraction, right? You're communicating care. You're communicating concern through your physical touch. What you're not communicating is sexual objectification, right? Oh, there's your body. I want to use it for my enjoyment and my amusement, right? Um, that's what groping communicates. And that's why it's not attractive. When these other ones, they communicate, hey, I care about you, I'm attracted to you, you know, I'm passionate about you, right? That is a different thing you're communicating through this, these physical touch. All right, another way to flirt, challenges. This is a fun one. So it, it's, a, it's a great way to flirt, fun way to introduce something different. So my wife and I, <laughs> we, we, we use this one a decent amount. Um, we went to a driving range not too long ago and... Um, my wife's, a, my wife's athletic, and uh, we had this challenge of uh, at the driving range, you know, could you hit it at these different targets? And whoever got closer, well, whoever was farther away had to take off an article of clothing. <laughs> so this is at the driving range, like in a public place. Um, so it was like strip driving range. Um, but I ended up losing... <laughs> So I got down to actually having no shirt on and I was hitting balls there. We stopped there, but, uh, you know, she was laughing super hard and you know, took a picture of it and it was just fun, right? It's a funny memory for us to have. Uh, recently we went to arcade game in arcade and, you know, challenged each other on those. You know, we made little bets about each arcade game, like, you know, what, who would choose the show later, who would choose, you know, dinner, you know, our, our marriage doesn't get spots. So we're able to, to make kind of sexual challenges with that too. Like what, who's wearing what to bed or who chooses what we do sexually that night. And, um, you yeah, know, it was just, a, it was really fun. So um, another thing you can do is have like a cooking challenge, like who's going to make the best dessert and you can try it and feed each other. And that's romantic, right? Have like a thumb wrestle. <laughs> it's kind of playful things, you know, a leg wrestle, um, you know, play twister together. Okay. 
uh, or play sports that you both enjoy or teach each other a new sport, right? So uh, my wife and I went and played pickleball. She hadn't played it too much before. So I got to show her kind of how to do that. And it was, it was fun together. And, you know, we kind of handicapped me so that the game was a little more, more even, more fair, uh, which was fun too. Um, so, you know, just the idea is just you get out and you play together. You have fun. You know, you're kind of kids again together, and it's it's just a great way to flirt and and in, introduce again that that joy and that fun back into your marriage. So another one you can do is accusing her of being too forward. This is kind of like more of an advanced technique. It takes some practice to do it, um, but it's a, saying stuff like you know, it, it, kind of like playing hard to get a little bit, or you know, acting like you know she's really pressing it as far as you know sexual attraction goes so if you notice her flirting with you right you say something like hey are you hitting on me right or you know if she says something that could be construed as sexual you know saying something like hey get your mind out of the gutter or hey you know there's kids around you know don't you know you shouldn't be talking like that so you're, you're joking around with her you're you know kind of having a good time or if you notice her looking at you you know you say something like you know don't look at me like that i'm not a piece of meat or, you know, hey, stop checking out my butt. You know, even if she's not, you know, she'll laugh at that and it'll be funny and it'll kind of, you know, subtly introduce the idea of attraction and sexuality in a fun way. Okay. So, uh, yeah, you accuse her of making those sexual advances, pretending you don't like it, even though you do like it. And even though she's maybe not even making a sexual advance. So, again, kind of advanced, fun, fun and playful way to do it, to flirt. Another thing to, to recognize is that is uh, this idea of eros energy. So eros or erotic energy, it's it's really creative energy. And so when you do things that are that have some kind of artistic expression to them, it often creates you know flirting and sexual feelings because it's they're related, right? It's creative energy. It's erotic energy. So doing stuff like cooking together, we brought up before, but, you know, you make a meal together, you feed each other, you, you make a dessert, you feed each other dessert, right? You know, that's erotic. It's it's uh, creating something together. It's uh, it's fun. Doing an art class together. So you go out, you, they have like the painting, you know, if, if you drink, there's like wine and, and uh, wine and painting. If you don't drink, you can still go to those and not drink. Um, so doing that, my wife and I did that, it was really fun. Uh, take a dance class together. Again, that's creative. It's it's movement. There's touch there. It's a lot of fun. Uh, listen to or sing to music together. Okay, singing in the car together can be a fun fun thing to do. Uh, make a music video. Right, that incorporates a lot of this kind of playfulness and and all of that. Um, but again, just like doing things that are are creative together, bring that eros, erotic, creative energy, and creates opportunities to flirt to you know have that connection. All right, so in summary, flirting, it's a way to have more fun and romance in your marriage. It's a fun thing to do. It's something to develop. So an, an easy way to start is just giving sincere compliments and sincere appreciation. Again, not in mosquito mode, just saying like, hey, you know, what are the things I really admire about my wife? And how can I, you know, share that with her? Maybe it's through a text. Maybe it's through a written note. Maybe it's uh, just telling her in person. Okay. You can also do them in public for extra meaning and playfulness, right? And in front of the kids and tell the kids how great your uh, your wife is. You can also communicate your love and appreciation for her through eye contact. And again, get yourself in that spot where you really are admiring her and, and are caring about her and then look at her in the eyes and, and communicate that just through your eyes. Okay, use physical touch and kissing, okay? But don't go straight for those, you know, don't rope her. <laughs> Okay, come up, give her a, a nice, strong, passionate kiss. Uh, you know, grab her face, touch her back, you know, whisper in her ear, give her a hug from behind, okay? What you're communicating is care and attraction and instead of sexual objectification. Okay, groping, that's just like, you're an object, I want to use your body for my pleasure, right? Where these other ones are saying, hey, like, I want you as a person, I'm attracted to you as a person. And that then opens a woman up to to know that you're going to care for her sexually and have a you know a fun time so use challenges as a way as a fun way to play and connect you know you gave some ideas about playing sports together or playing games even you know uh, board games if you're not going to get like too competitive about it right 
<laughs> some like twister or, you know, making these funny bets when you go do stuff. Uh, playfully accuse her of being too forward, right? Say, hey, you know, stop checking me out or, you know, I'm not a piece of meat, that kind of thing. And then get involved in creative artistic activities as a way to arouse that Eros creative energy that then translates often into, um, you know, romantic connection. Again, creative things would be like dancing, cooking, uh, music, those sort of things. All right, guys. So get out there. Go flirt with your wife. All right. And watch for my program. It's coming April 1st. Okay. So the end of this month essential skills for a happy marriage. It's going to teach you everything you need to know to have an incredible relationship with your wife. Um, you know, it, it is open to women too. So, you know, I know there's women that listen to this. So, you know, whoever you are that's listening, if you want to, because here's the truth, like you don't, a lot of people think a great marriage, it's about, you know, finding the one person that's going to, you know, make you happy for the rest of your life. So many errors in that thinking. Okay that someone else is going to make you happy pretty much doesn't happen. Um, that you're going to make someone else happy. You know, you, you, you know, you can't make somebody have emotions. That's the whole issue that's behind all this, <laughs> but you, you know, you can learn skills, right? You learn skills to take care of your own emotions, take care of your own thoughts, and then to communicate things clearly. Like this flirting one is a good one. You know, you, you build these skills, the skill of flirting, it's important for a marriage to have fun, to be able to communicate romance and um, excitement, right? So, you know, these are skills. You can learn them and you can take them into a relationship and have an incredible marriage. If you learn the skills, practice them and get good at them. And that's exactly what this course is going to teach you, the skills that you need. So you can rebuild trust, rebuild connection, enjoy sexuality together, you know, enjoy having fun together, be great parents together, okay? All of that. All right, you're going to learn the skills that you need. So watch for that. If you're not on my email email list yet, head over to MikeFraserMD.com and join um, and sign up so you know when that's coming. All right, man, stay strong. We'll see you next episode.